According to the Food and Agricultural Organization, the Lake Chad Basin is one of the most important agricultural heritage sites in the world, providing a lifeline to nearly 30 million people in four countries, including Nigeria, Cameroon, Chad, and Niger. It was once Africa's largest freshwater reservoir in the Sahel region, covering an area of about 26,000 square kilometers. Over the years, however, there has been a dramatic decrease in the size of the lake, as according to climatologists, it has shrunk to nearly a twentieth of its original size. But while many believe the shrinking of Lake Chad is due to a drier climate and a high agricultural demand for water, this professor of geography disagrees. Lake Chad at the moment has not disappeared and is not on the point to disappear. The second point is that there is no scientific evidence that climate change has a role in the recent evolution of Lake Chad. Because in the past, Lake Chad has already almost disappeared in the 15th century. For example, at, at the beginning of the 20th century, Lake Chad was at a very low level because it is very shallow. There is a strong evaporation. So when the inflow of the Shari Logon system diminued, the uh, inundated area uh, decreased. Uh, in, a, in an important way. Uh, it's quite interesting that we have an alternative view on the Lake Chad. Uh, for long we have believed that the climate crisis has continued to hit the Lake Chad, hit the populations who live in that area uh, so badly that it is in fact the security problems because you know the Lake Chad Boko Haram in the south, the Darfur crisis to the east of the Lake Chad, the uh, Libyan crisis to the west of the Lake Chad. And we thought all of this was because of the fact that people were getting more and more poor from uh, the shrinking Lake Chad. Their resources were getting uh, to disappear. But listening to Professor Margrain and the research he's done in the last uh, eight to ten years on the Lake Chad seems to give us another perspective, which is to say that indeed maybe we need to do a closer study and closer understanding of the crisis of the Lake Chad. Yes, in the last uh, six years there about, I've been attending conferences where Lake Chad issue has been brought up and what he has said has not in any significant way changed what we know about the Lake Chad. The fact remains, like I did pointed out, that it the, the lake is shrinking in size. The fact remains that people are migrating away from around the area. The fact remains that climate change is a factor in the shrinking of the lake. The fact remains that, of course, like he said, we should start to look at the impact of population, the impact of natural resources management. I think that what we need to do is to have a global view of the challenges around the child. What he has said essentially has not negated what we know and believe about lecture. Uh, though, yes, he has presented alternative views that need to be given some serious uh, academic uh, interrogation. And I'm glad that the University of Lagos is proposing you know, to engage him in such interrogation at uh, a, a meeting, an academic meeting that's soon to take place. As part of the lake dries up, most farmers and cattle herders have moved towards greener areas where they compete for land resources with host communities, creating security issues. But what is sure is that the human need for population for irrigation will increase because the population will increase in a very important way. The population of the basin is at the moment almost 50 million habitants. It will be 130 million in 2050. So if the uses of water are rising, the abstraction of water in the Shari Logan system, the water that will be abstracted from, from the, the, the Shari Logan system and then from the lake, uh, could uh, cause a, um, a drying up of the lake if the water is not properly managed at a regional scale within uh, the, the, the countries that share uh, this, uh, these waters uh, with a common institution that is called LCBC, that is, uh, the, which a role is to uh, improve the regional management of this water. To salvage the lake, 
the Lake Chad Basin Commission's member countries have plans to build a dam to pump water uphill from Kungo River on to the lake, a project which this researcher thinks is unnecessary. I think the people living in the lake, their main problem at the moment, it's not hydrology, their main problem is security. So at the moment, you know, Boko Haram is, uh, uh, is, is causing a strong insecurity. There are a lot of people whose lives have been destroyed, that have been displaced, that have been refugees in neighboring country. So the priority is to bring back security. And the priority just after security is to bring development in this area. Uh, people are among the poorest in uh, the region. They need investment in roads, in agriculture, in education, in health, in sanitation, and so on. And so development in, is the real priority in the region, maybe more than to sustain a stable level of water that had never been reached uh, in the Lake Chad. Whoever is contending that the whole idea of spending about 14 billion dollars to recharge the lake child from the Congo Basin uh, might be a white elephant project, one that is so intimidating and has a lot of political implications that is blinding us, our eyes to other natural means of addressing the lake child crisis. So it's essentially saying that there are counter narratives um, that a lot of the noise around, oh, let's recharge the lake child, has political and commercial motivation behind it. The Lake Child Basin Commission is hereby being invited, in fact, to consider other alternatives. We should not all just, like the Yoruba say, sleep and turn our heads in one certain direction. We now have scientific evidence to show that uh, probably the lake chart is not shrinking. That what we see in the lake chart is a dynamic cycle of uh, regression of water and egression of water. When there is heavy rain, then you get floods into the lake chart. The northern basin of the lake chart and the southern basin of the lake chart have been uh, badly impacted because of the ridge between the two basins. And so water cannot flow to the northern basin. So it appears as if the northern basin is dried up, whereas what is actually happening is that the ridge, and because of uh, the fact that there is isn't enough rainfall, is not getting filled with water. So essentially, um, we want to invite our governments, we want to let our governments know that there's an alternative view, there's an alternative research, which will help in uh, determining what we're doing with the lake chart. The lake chart is important to us. It's the lake chart, in fact, is, uh, as I said, symptomatic of the Sahel crisis. The Sahel crisis is the fact that the Sahara Desert is advancing. It used to be latitude uh, 12 degrees north that we said the lake chart was limited to. But now it's moving down. The Nigerian government has set up the Green Wall project to try to stop that advancement. The same thing we need to do to look at the lake chart and be sure that truly we, uh, the lake chart is not drying up because the alternative view we had today is that the lake chart is not drying up but that uh, some kind of uh, hydrological cycles is what is making it look like it's drying up. But among the 30 million people who depend on lake chart, there is uncertainty as to how much longer the lake will remain and when they will be able to get a relief.